Hello, boys and girls. I'm your Peter Pan storyteller. This is the story of the last starfighter. This is the story of gremlins. This is the story of Tron. This is the story of Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is the story of the Empire Strikes Back. You can read along with me in your book. You can follow the story along with me. Every time you hear this sound. Every time you hear this sound. Turn the pages when you hear this sound. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the computer sound like this. Let's, let's begin, let's begin now. Hello everyone, welcome to the latest episode of When You Hear This Sound, brought to you by the Space Monkey X Audio Workshop. I'm your host, Rob Lamley. This week I have the read-along record book from one of my favorite movies as a kid, Tron. Released in 1982, written by Steven Lisberger and Bonnie McBird, directed by Lisberger, and starring Jeff Bridges, Bruce Boxleitner, David Warner, Cindy Morgan, and Bernard Hughes, the film was groundbreaking in a lot of ways. Tron introduced many people in the audience to computer animation, using around 20 minutes of computer graphics for fan-favorite scenes like the Light Cycles, the Solar Sailor, and one of my favorite vehicular baddies, the Recognizer. Aside from the CGI, advanced rotoscoping techniques were developed to give the costumes and background elements that now iconic electronic glow. Tron was released on July 8, 1982, and would go on to gross about $50 million on a $17 million budget. A cult favorite sequel, Tron Legacy, was released in 2010, and another sequel, currently titled Tron Ares, is slated for release in 2025. During its initial release, Tron generated over $70 million in merchandising revenue, including t-shirts, action figures, video games, and yes, a read-along record book. The record was produced by Walt Disney Records, and like a lot of record books, the plot of the film is dramatized by actors taking the place of the film's stars. However, unlike a lot of other record books, this one doesn't include the original synthesizer score, created by the synth pioneer Wendy Carlos. But what the record lacks in authenticity, it makes up for in the art department. Rather than use photos, the interior is made up of paintings that are some of the finest I've seen in a kid's read-along record book. I wish they would have credited the artist, because they did a bang-up job. Head over to SpaceMonkeyX.net to check out the PDF of the book so you can read along while you listen. Speaking of listening, let's get to the record. Here's the 1982 Walt Disney Records release of Tron, a movie so great they haven't built a circuit that could hold it yet. Enjoy. This is the story of Tron. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the computer sound like this. Let's begin now. It was late at night, but computer programmer Alan Bradley was still hard at work at his computer keyboard. Oh, it's like someone or something is trying to keep me out of the computer system. Come to think of it, it's been that way since Dillinger took over the company. That very night, Alan was called into his boss's office. Mr. Dillinger, my Tron program is vital. It protects the entire system from illegal activity. But that master control program, that MCP, has me shut out. Relax, Alan. The MCP is just checking a security leak. I'm sure Tron will be back on the job soon. After Alan left, the MCP's metallic voice boomed through the executive's office. I am so very disappointed in you, Dillinger. We can't have this Tron program spying on me. I'm planning to break into the Air Force computers soon. The Air Force? Just do as I tell you. Keep Tron out. End of line, Dillinger. In the laser lab downstairs, Alan's girlfriend, Laura, was conducting an experiment. With the push of a button, a laser beam shot across the room, hitting its target, a common orange. The fruit glowed briefly, then disappeared. Nice trick, Laura, said Alan as he entered the lab. 
the pretty young scientist smiled. The laser scans the object, breaks down the molecules, and stores them digitally. I can pull the orange out of the computer whenever I want. I wish you could do the same for my Tron program. Hmm. I may not be able to, Alan, but Flynn could. Once a top-notch programmer for Dillinger's company, Flynn was now the owner of a video game parlor. Alan and Laura found him at a Space Paranoids game, beating the record high score. Hey, good to see you guys. What brings you two in search of the video game, Wiz? <laughs> Come on, we can talk in my office. Flynn listened to Alan's story. Boy, would I love to get even with Dillinger. He stole five of my best video game programs. He got a big promotion and I got fired. But the proof is all locked up in the computer. Alan grinned. My Tron program could unlock the proof. What are we waiting for? Get me to a computer keyboard. Alan and Laura sneaked Flynn into the laser lab. Flynn hurried to a keyboard. You two stand guard. I'll have Tron up and running in no time. In moments, Flynn had tapped into the MCP. A booming metallic voice flooded the lab. You shouldn't have come back, Flynn. I'm going to have to put you on the game grid. The MCP switched on Laura's laser. It fired a blinding blast. Ah! Like the experimental orange, Flynn's body was broken down into bits and sucked into the computer. Now we'll see how smart you really are, Flynn. Flynn found himself in a strange electronic world where everyone wore glowing armor. A fierce warrior approached him. I am Sark, and you are my prisoner. Flynn was shoved onto a glowing game grid. There stood another prisoner with a very familiar face. Alan? No, I'm Tron, Alan's security program. I'm Flynn. We've got to escape and destroy the MCP. Sark silenced them. You both will now compete in the light cycle contest. The losers will terminate. On gleaming cycles, Tron and Flynn sped across the game grid, building video walls as they went. Flynn, here comes one of Sark's men. Let's cut him off. Ready to turn? Now! Look! He smashed right through the game wall! Follow me through that hole, Tron. We're getting out of here. We did it, Flynn. We've escaped the game grid. Sark shook with rage. Get them! Send out every tank in the game grid if you have to, but get them! Flynn led Tron through a maze of computer world canyons. Don't slow down! Those tanks are right on our tail! Head for that distant city, Flynn. There's a communication tower there. If I can contact Alan, he'll give me the information I need to defeat the MCP. Watch out, Tron! A tank! A blast of energy exploded. Flynn was thrown from his light cycle. Tron stared sadly at his unmoving friend. Farewell, Flynn. Now I must face the MCP alone. And on he sped. Tron found the city almost abandoned. The MCP was draining away all its power. In the nearly deserted streets, he spotted a familiar female program. Yori! I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Oh, Tron, you've returned just in time. We are the only programs left, and as soon as we complete the MCP's new solar sailor, our power will be drained too. The two rebel programs carefully made their way through the streets. Once we reach the communication tower, Tron, we'll only have a few moments to contact Alan. Sark's guards will soon be combing the city for you. 
That alarm says they're already here. Hurry! Back in the canyon, a dazed Flynn struggled to his feet. I've got to catch up with Tron. But how can I make it across this desert to the city? Hey, what's this? A broken down video game ship. A recognizer. Flynn stepped into the cockpit and grabbed the controls. His energy flowed into the damaged ship and it began to move. All right, let's get this show on the road. Flynn found the battered ship hard to steer and it bumped roughly into a canyon wall. A glowing ball suddenly shot out of hiding and flew nervously around the cockpit. Who are you? Oh, I know. You're a computer bit, right? Pretty good driving, eh? Ah, who asked you? And they continued on to the city. As Flynn flew the shaky recognizer through the town, he noticed a building surrounded by Sark's fierce warriors. That must be the communication tower. Tron made it. Meanwhile, inside the tower, Yori listened as the soldiers beat down the outside door. Hurry, Tron. You must contact your creator, Alan. Tron stepped onto a platform and waited. A brilliant beam of light shone down, and Alan's voice was heard. Tron, I'm giving you a powerful code disk. It will give you access to the MCP. This is our only hope of freeing the computer system. A glowing electronic disk floated down the communication beam and into Tron's eager hands. Yori grabbed Tron's hand. Sark's guards are broken in. Quick, to the solar sailor. The two renegade programs dashed to the hangar of the butterfly-shaped video ship. Get it started, Yori. I'll hold them off. Tron hurled the powerful disc at the attacking soldiers and scattered them like sticks. The disc returned obediently to Tron. A figure raced into the hangar. Wait, Tron. It's me, Flynn. Tron pulled him aboard just as the solar sailor flew off. Sark knew they were headed for the MCP. We must get there first. Sark's massive command carrier raced after them. The solar sailor was swift, but the carrier streaked past him. There, in the distance, stood the gigantic MCP tower, its brilliant beam of communication shooting upward. And guarding his master was Sark, now a monstrous size. The MCP has given me all its power to terminate you, Tron. Tron leaped in front of his enemy. The power disc was hurled. Sark went down in a shower of sparks. Flynn watched from above. Tron has defeated Sark, but the MCP has sealed itself shut. There's only one way to get in. Steer us over that beam, Yori. I'm gonna jump. Flynn's body spiraled down the beam deep into the core of the MCP. A blinding blast of energy erupted. The MCP melted into nothingness. In a flash, all captive programs were freed, and the computer world came to life again. Flynn had saved the system. Flynn's body materialized in the laser lab. He shook his head, trying to understand his fantastic experience. Alan rushed into the lab. You did it! You destroyed the MCP! Laura smiled at Flynn's puzzled expression. <laughs> Have a look at the computer screen. There was Flynn's proof that Dillinger had stolen his video games. Flynn smiled. End of line, Dillinger. Thanks for stopping by the show today. 
be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. You can head over to spacemonkeyx.net for pictures, links, and additional information about this episode, and check out some of the other podcasts presented by the Space Monkey X Audio Workshop. This has been your host, Rob Lamley. Thanks for listening to When You Hear This Sound, the podcast dedicated to the weird and wonderful world of read-along record books and storybook vinyl. I'll see y'all next time.